in all the oceans of the world and from every kind of boat. These days, some even meet the fish in their own territory. But meeting the fish, finding them, has always involved a degree of luck, even superstition. Till science devised this compact instrument. Technical name, dual sweep transducer. Common name, fish finder. My name, Mike Nelson. I'd been hired to test the fish finder on an experimental boat called the Sonar Queen. Down off the coast of Lower California, her skipper, Ted Lawson, set his course by the electronic graph. I verified its accuracy among the schools of fish below. The equipment checked out fine. It was a host of ancient superstitions that led us into trouble. with superstition began when the Sonar Queen headed for a tiny fishing village to replenish supplies. What's the name of this village again? Punta Esteban. Punta Esteban. Never been here before, huh? No. Never have. Ah, uh, sure, beautiful. Peaceful, too. I say peaceful. You're all brave. Six brave men. You think so, Arturo? I can take you. There'll be more. What do you want of me? What is it you want? Go out to sea and don't come back. Go on. I have rights, like everyone else. I have rights. They were fish. Plenty of fish. But where are they now? You catch fish. All the time you catch fish. But we don't. Why? Fisherman's luck. My Madonna. I kiss my Virgencita and she brings me luck. You pick that up. Or I'll... Are you what? You want trouble. I'll give you trouble. No one's going to push me. <laughs> where he catches fish. for trouble.
fishermen, senor. Yes, a whole bunch of them. He is my father. His name is Ramirez. Arturo Ramirez. They told me he was hurt, that you took him on your boat. Yes, we did. Come on aboard. Why did they beat him up like that, you know? Because they hate him. Why do they hate him? For finding fish when they don't. He catches fish and they don't? Well, that's a neat little trick. How does he do that? I don't know. No one knows. Nobody ever will. Papa, Papacito, are you all right? What do you want from my daughter? Who are you? They're friends, Papa. Friends. I have no friends, not here. They helped you. Come, we go for it. Tell them about the fish. Maybe they can help you. I tell them nothing. I fish alone in my place. No one is going to take it. Your place? You mean there's just one place where you catch the fish? Come, we go now. Excuse me, Mr. Mike. Mr. Mike, thank you. But please, go away. Gracias. Well, that's that. Now, let's get those supplies and get out of here. What's the rush? No need poking our noses in other people's business. Uh, maybe it's our business, too. You mean that senorita is? Come on, you're not fooling anyone. I saw her look at you with those big, sad eyes. <laughs> oh, I'm serious. How come that he finds his fish in just one place, huh? Must be a reason for that. I don't know. And what do you propose doing about it? Find this place. Find it? How? We'd be combing this sea for days. He'll probably be going out the first thing in the morning. He won't go if you follow him. You can bet he won't go near his special place if anybody's in sight. Didn't we come down here to test our equipment? What do you mean? We got to test radar, too, you know. At dawn next morning, the old man slipped out of the village in a tiny dinghy and headed for his fishing boat offshore. A hundred yards away, the sonar queen was anchored innocently. Its uh, radar really didn't need testing. It was working perfectly. There he goes. Yeah. See him? No other boat's following him. Better get that map. I'm sure and mark his course now so we can follow him. We tracked the old man for almost three hours as he zigzagged back and forth, evidently to discourage being followed. But ultimately, he set a straighter course, and the number of starts and stops in a narrow area indicated he'd come to his special place.
then finally he turned for home. He made all of his stops right in this one area, didn't he? Yeah, he sure did. Let's go take a look at it. There seemed to be practically no fish life to speak of in this region. It just didn't figure. Particularly if there had actually been fish here before. Hey, Mike. There's his boat. Yeah, it sure is. We changed our course so the old man wouldn't be aware we were heading for his special place. And when we finally reached it, the fish finder went completely crazy. Oh, you ought to see these fish. So we found the old man's place. Now what? Hey, wait a minute. If this thing has gone haywire, I'm seeing things. What's the matter? Hold it here for a while, will you? Look it out and take a look. What seems to be the problem? I won't know that until I get down there. Something you saw on the fish finder? Yeah. They're all grouped in a perfectly straight line. What do you figure would cause that? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. Many times as I've gone below, each dive constitutes a brand new experience with its own kind of excitement and beauty. What made this one unique was the discovery that everything the electronic device registered on a graph was unequivocally correct. Even the almost unbelievable phenomenon of all the fish swimming in a straight line. It was uncanny. Almost as if the superstitions of the villages were about to be found true as if some kind of witchcraft were really behind Arturo's luck. But then the luck touched my very hands. A cable. An old abandoned telephone cable. The insulation had been eaten away by the sea, exposing the copper wiring. The copper and the salt water were creating a form of electrolysis. And it was this electrolysis that was acting as a lure, attracting the fish. As I worked, it was almost as if these strange sea creatures knew I'd found their secret. this? The old man's luck. Bad luck, huh? Maybe your good luck has run out. I said, your good luck is finished. Your friends at the pier, they have gone away. But you haven't. Leave me alone. No, we won't. Not anymore. Remember what we did to you the last time? Maybe you will talk now. You will tell us where the fish are. You will tell us also, help me. I'll cut you to pieces and throw you to the ocean. Maybe that'll bring the fish back. This is your last chance to talk. You won't steal any more fish from us, you thief. There's your thief. Mind your own business, or you'll have plenty of trouble, too. 
Not as much as you if you don't listen to the truth. We know the truth. The waters are cursed, but not for him. You mean because he found a special place to catch his fish? Yes, an unholy place. Does this make it unholy? This uh, telephone cable? Telephone cable. You think we're stupid, don't you? No. Superstitious, maybe. What are you talking about? If you let him go, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Show us? How are you going to show us? By taking you there myself. To the spot where he fishes? We'll take you there tomorrow morning in our boat. How did you find it? There are ways. New, modern ways. I wouldn't let you take them. I wouldn't let you. Please, Papacito, he must take them. If we go on like this, I'll find you dead one day. I can take care of myself. Without the help of the Senor Mike and his tricks. It's no trick. We'll take you along, too. You'll see, it's no trick at all. He doesn't like it, so I guess it's all right to go. All right. We'll go with you. But there better be fish there. We headed out to Arturo's special place at full throttle next morning. In the aft cockpit, there was tension born of Caesar's suspicion, the old man's heartbreaking stubbornness. To him, the world had come to an end, that world that huddled below us in a perfectly straight line on the bottom of the ocean. May I have that, please? Why? We're going to fish, not hunt. I want to show you something. You too. You showed him my place. What else is there to show? How to fish. <laughs> you show me how to fish? <laughs> Cesar Franco, who has fished for 30 years, like my father, my grandfather before me. <laughs> I know, but times have changed. Now, when you come forward, I want to show you something. Do me a favor, please, huh? You come with me. And I take a look at this. Yeah. You see this line here? It marks the depth of the ocean floor right below us. Look at that. That's a school of fish passing over the bottom. Yeah. Now, this graph is a record of what we see on here. It shows that all the fish that used to be in your bay now gather in this particular area. Okay, right around here. See there? In a straight line. Here. Now, you see this? It's because of this. This old telephone cable that lies on the bottom. It attracts the fish because of its chemical reaction. Ah. Uh. Chemical reaction. Big words again. Look at these fish. Look! I see no fish. Of course not. You don't actually see them. But if the sun casts your shadow on the floor, I don't have to actually see you in the flesh to know that you're there. I see your shadow, right? Well, it's just like this fish finder, this machine. It casts the shadow of the fish. I see shadows. Anybody can understand that. I am not anybody. I am Cesar Franco. No one's going to make a fool out of me. If there's a shadow, I want to see who makes it. You can make these shadows yourself with this machine of yours. Cut the engines, Ted. Ah. You see this fish here? I'd say it was about five or six feet long. It's probably a shark. Okay. I'm gonna show you that shark in the flesh.
anyone needed fisherman's luck, I did at this point. For in these swarms of fish, even a shark was a needle in a haystack. And yet I had to find the fellow who'd registered on the graph to prove his existence to the men who waited skeptically above. But luck was with me. Suddenly, he was there. Five or six feet of him, with teeth that could slash off an arm or a leg. I was ready. So was my net. But my fins were not as fast as his. I went after him as he slipped away. And luck again, he turned, perhaps to attack. He headed right for me. On my first pass, I had him in the net. You say that shark is, huh? Oh, five or six feet. It's like the shadows in the fish finder, huh? Yeah. yeah. Say, with one of those fish finders, I could find fish anywhere, couldn't I, senor? Yeah, that's right. Anywhere. Then there'd be plenty of fish for everybody, huh? Senor Mike, you know something? You're a fine fellow. All this trouble you make for yourself, trouble for me, and all the rest, I'm grateful. Very grateful. Here. I want you to have this, my Virgencita. She's been good to me. May she always be good to you. Ah, uh, no thanks. You keep it. You fishermen, you need all the luck that you can get. Our luck was your coming here, Senor Nelson. I've been lucky. I have some money. I will buy a fish finder for for the village. And we'll all fish together, eh, Cesar? You buy us a fish finder? Sure, amigo. Why not? Gracias, Arturo. Muchas gracias. You keep it. You know something? That fish finder can spot anything. Even a treasure. And the treasure of Punta Esteban today is friendship, founded on the trust of each fisherman for his brother, as they sail together with science lighting their way. We'll be back next week at the same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh?